I'm not sure if you actually guys saw that. I didn't see anything moving around. But sup, people? What's going on? Throw down your questions. I am your host, Emilio Lopez, and I am joined by Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, yo. All right. And Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> and Mr. Brian Manjoma. How on earth do you mess up a flag? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, my God. Do you not have Google or something? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah. That we'll talk about that. That 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 was, that was pretty interesting. <laughs> hey, well, you you know, maybe it's not a Puerto Rican flag because you know multiple uh, countries have that same similar design. So, <laughs> anyway, well, well, I guess we, yeah, that, well, yeah, we'll we'll talk about it. But it, it, yeah, I got thoughts. Yeah. So yeah, um, you know, you may notice there's a few folks uh, missing this time around, and uh, yeah, Tony's out there flying the friendly skies or he's going to be we can't actually talk about where he's going to be but he'll be able to talk about that later so yeah he's going to be gone for this episode of throw down your questions and the following episode but you know us man we hold it down we got we got our we got our folks here we got we got rbj here <laughs> so we're gonna be doing it oh yeah i can't even i can't look forward to tonight's show yeah, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, let's get things started. Um, we have, uh, you know, Carlos is going to be doing the questions. Uh, so, yeah. What's so up? let's start with, uh, let's start with a, with an interesting character here. His name is Eurocar9. And uh, <laughs> I find it, I find it very interesting that Mr. Eurocar9 managed to get all the way up at the top. Hmm. Mm. Uh, you know, there's, there's, there's some, there's some pr uh, privileges uh, <laughs> that goes he's, around sometimes he's a, he's for, definitely, for the OGs. He's definitely a very special character. <laughs> <laughs> so his question is, question for those who've played Spider-Man 2, is, is this the buggiest Insomniac game you've ever played? Ooh. And it's an interesting question. Out of, out of the four of us in, 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 in this chat, I think it's only me and Rich who have played it, right? I know uh, Manny, you've uh, you you have the game. I I I yes I I have the game, but I can't actually play it because there's no there's no there's no PlayStation <laughs> like you like you see on Crawler's screen there. So uh, I'm I'm waiting for the I'm waiting for the for the slim. So I don't know when that's coming. Probably November at some point. So we'll see. Hmm. Oh. Wow. So so here's the thing. I'll go first, Rich, uh, because. This is pretty interesting because you and me have different experiences, and we'll and we'll go over what why the potentially differences between your gameplay and my gameplay are. I played the game for an estimated ten or so hours, um, and yeah, I, I have to agree with Mister Eurocar Nine. I think this is the buggiest Insomnia game I played at least uh, in the at, at least out of the Spider Man games. I've gotten I've gotten game crashes. I got this weird bug where I was fighting like a horde of, of enemies and I couldn't complete it because one of the enemies I couldn't hit. <laughs> I couldn't hit him. Like he, he, he could hit me. He's like, he's hitting me, but I try to shoot my, my webs at him. I try to swing. I try to do all my specials. Nothing. It was the weirdest thing, but he could, and he killed, I let him kill me because I couldn't do anything. Um, but yeah, it's interesting because you know, Insomniac for me. Every time I play their games, they're probably some of the most polished games that I've played from a AAA developer uh, in, in more recent times. Just talking about Ratchet and Clank and mm -hmm. Spider Man and Spider Man Miles Morales. This one, I don't know, you know, what happened, but there's there's something. You know, that they might have rushed this just a little bit. I mean, I'm not saying this is unplayable. <laughs> By no means am I saying this is unplayable. But the bugs do stand out uh, compared to the other ones. Um, you know, I came. I'm, I'm coming from Starfield, so it's not as bad. And Cyberpunk, <laughs> so the, both of those games are even more guilty. So it doesn't feel as bad. But yeah, it's 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 pretty. You know, it's noticeable. Uh, J Chef <laughs> asks, on a scale of one to ten, how buggy is it? Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll I'll give it a I'll give it a five. 
I'll give it a five. Is it's it, not the it, buggiest game. It's an insomnia game. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> <laughs> well so l l l let me go ahead and, and go next to you, Carlos. You said we both have a difference of opinion on this. I So let me go ahead and say this. I did review the game on the website, thecoalition.com. I had access to the game about two and a half weeks earlier. Mm -hmm. And at that point, there were no patches that they allowed us to, that, that they sent to us to download. So I, I didn't really encounter any issues. I didn't do anything with the settings because when you start the game, you can adjust the settings at the very beginning. That's the first thing you can do when you start the game. I didn't adjust any of that because to me, I already knew it was where, where I wanted it to be. I didn't play around with the settings because, you know, that's Digital Foundry's job, not my job. I'm there to play the game, review it, see how it pretty much is. So I had played the game and completed it, and I actually got the Platinum Trophy right before, like a, a day or so before they released this, this day one patch. So I haven't had a chance to go back to the game and see a lot of the issues that people are encountering. I do, I do want to say this, though. Um, I have noticed online that there is a story around these bugs because a lot of people are using this to say the game is, 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 is horrible. And I, I've seen a lot of posts on Twitter. Uh -oh. I know our very good friend Tony Polanco also was talking about this on Twitter. So I look forward to seeing what he says when he returns to the show because uh, I just I just think that's ridiculous because it's like it, the bugs that have happened. I don't know how many bugs you've encountered, Carlos. So I can't really say. I would be curious to know people listening to this show how many bugs y'all have encountered. But I didn't encounter any. Um, but I, I I don't think it's as severe as people are making it out to be. But then again, I don't know because certain situations uh, might be different for somebody else. But I didn't encounter any any bugs in my playthrough. And this could potentially be because of the day one patch that we got yes. when, the, when the game released. Something might have been thrown to whack because I, I have I have been seeing the, the the contrast between the reviewers and and the people playing. There have been some uh, some videos of of bugs reported and. Uh, and but there's also you know there's also the like you mentioned there's the the propaganda where it's you know people <laughs> saying oh you know this game yeah you know starfield you're making fun of starfield you're making fun of cyberpunk and all that stuff look at this so you know there's that there's that end as well uh barry burton mentioned something he says zero bucks all arachnids <laughs> 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 That's funny. And then Jay Shep asked, "Do you guys recall uh, reviewers mentioning the bugs?" Because he, he says he hasn't, and I haven't either. I, I read yeah. Rich's review. I read uh, the Tom's Guide review, uh, and Tony's thoughts, obviously, when he yeah. talked about the game. Um, and and oh, and, and kind of funny as well. I'll go ahead, Rich. And and one thing I wanted to say to piggy back onto that, yeah, I, I don't know any reviewers that encountered uh, any issues. I did see that today. Uh, the guy over at Digital Foundry, somebody came after him because they were saying, well, are you going to make a video addressing the bugs? And he's saying the stuff that he's, that people are talking about, they're not severe, at least. But but again, they a lot of these people had access to the game before that day one patch. So this is why you're seeing a lot of people saying, hey, no. But I understand why people could hear that and think people were lying in the review. I'm here to tell you, they're not lying. There were no issues with the game before these patches, but obviously with the patches, it definitely changed some stuff. I don't know exactly what it changed because I haven't really been doing any research as to, I know there's a lot of different isolated things. I know with Adam, he mentioned that his son in the game, Peter Parker is talking to somebody and there's no model there whatsoever. <laughs> yeah. So stuff like that is, mm. uh, that sounds pretty, pretty severe, you know, but I, I haven't encountered any of that. So yeah. <laughs> it's, inter it's interesting when, because like, okay, like, at least for me, I like on the original uh, Spider-Man game. I did have some weird issues, like you know, like Spider-Man mm. PS4. Like there was one point, I think I, I posted shots of it where, um, you know, like it was a, a, sh a thing that happened in. Oh, whoa, whoa, what's up, Chris? So yeah, there was a thing that I um that happened where it was like everything. It was like the first appearance of like you see King. We find out Kingpin's involved, and he's in this like underground like place and he's talking to kingpin kingpin wasn't like was, was all red 
and like the whole room was all out of whack. And I had something, <laughs> I had something similar happen in Miles Morales too, where everybody got real shiny, just like so. But the thing about it is, I like these things sort of happened after like hours and hours of play. Like I'd been playing for hour, like a long time, and then all of a sudden these crazy mm -hmm. ass bugs just started showing up. So I mean, I just figured like, oh. oh, you know, maybe it's just, you know, you know, just having the game on for so long did it. Who knows? I, I had a similar experience. I had everyone, uh, Spider Man turned into a little white cube. <laughs> so, so there, I guess there's like a placeholder for the character, like where he's supposed wow. to be standing, right? Yeah. So the, the model disappeared and there was just this white cube. I'm swinging around the city. This white cube is just swinging around. And then I, I got into a fight. I recorded this too. I was like, everything went wonky. And then it got worse because when I quit the game and I went to the main menu, Spider-Man had no body. It was just there was just a head floating around. It was weird. <laughs> you know that was a, there was also a, a glitch very similar to that in the original one, where you remember people were like swinging around as like um what is it those um like light poles or boxes like sometimes yeah. it would randomly get mixed up and think that you're something else so you'd be like a weird thing just floating around. So a lot of these like oddly to say. There are the a lot of these glitches that people seem to be experience, experiencing seem to be sort of common with the previous Spider-Man games, because I've had mm. those same issues too. In fact, there was a huge glitch mm. on on Miles Morales, which is kind of a good thing though, where you could if you press the buttons a certain way, you could get um original Spider-Man, you could get like him instead oh. of instead of Miles Morales. But he was slightly broken because he doesn't have all of Miles' moves. Well, one of one of the glitches that I got in this new game is not a bad glitch. It's it's actually kind of funny. So I'm swinging around, but my but my webs are still tied to my hand and to the last building that I swung on. So <laughs> as, as I keep swinging, the webs are still like like going on, which is pretty funny. Um, so I you just had you though. just had a thousand webs off of Spider Man's hands. Well, it, it was just it was just the two it was just the two and the new web that he uses for the new buildings but the the, the two from the original buildings are still stuck in his hands and, and like building this huge long trail of web it's pretty hilarious mm -hmm. but yeah hey chris a uh, question for you have you been playing uh the spider-mans yeah yeah like i said um i was okay so there were, I was doing um because I wanted to level up, so I was just doing random like stopping random crimes, and that's when I ran into the cube problem. Like I switched mm -hmm. the suits, like I bought a suit and I switched Miles and Spider Man to their new suits, and then they just turned into cubes, and then I couldn't see the suit. And even when you went to the suit menu, none of them would load. Like it got really weird, and uh -oh. so that's how I ran into that. Uh, but yeah, I got I'm maybe a more than a third the game i think i don't i don't want to spoil anything i don't know if, what what i can say you know although i yeah. i did a mission involving pigeons and i went right through a building and got stuck and i had to start it over again oh. like i was flying so fast <laughs> i was flying through the rings and then i i was like oh shit the, the pointer moved so i turned and i flew into this building and Iron Man just got completely stuck in the game, wigged out. And I was like, oh, crap. Uh-oh. I, I think I know what mission you're talking about. Me and Rich were talking about this earlier. It's the, the, yeah. the Howard mission, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. Guiding the pigeons. Yeah. I, yeah get I, my I, pigeons! I the, I didn't, <laughs> there's a pigeon guy. The, all these games have pigeon guys. But yeah, they, that, that's a pretty good one. Uh, I, I I went through the coast, like through the through the river, portion so i didn't i didn't have the chance to get stuck on a building but yeah it's interesting yo man yeah, you move it me, too I mean, fast for, definitely... yo man you move it too fast for that game <laughs> yeah i was like <laughs> yeah because i wanted to get the pigeons to wherever they were going in queens i was like all right i'll just ride the current and i see the point there over there and i slammed into a building and he went right through the building yo, Chris. <laughs> that was like, yo i could get out of the building <laughs> Yo, Chris, this is this is Mark Cerny getting back at you. He's like, motherfucker, you said we couldn't go that fast in this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to break the world either. I find it, I find it funny if you go into subway stations, Spider-Man just jumps out of them. You you can you no longer can ride the subway. I'm a little sad. 
Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fast travel is now just plain fast travel. Like you just appear in the wherever you fast travel to. I'm like, well, yeah. I wanted to ride the subway. Yeah, ride the subway. <laughs> you will only see like two seconds of the subway, though. Like you know, like if they had that, yeah, like, you know, they had a little neat. cinematic. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was neat. I, I mean, why take it out? Just leave it in there. By the way, we, since since we we mentioned it at the start of the show, the let's talk about Flaggate. Yep. Uh oh. I think I think it's interesting because the 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 thing is Miles Morales is Puerto Rican, mm-hmm. famously Puerto Rican in this game in the franchise, uh, and they and his apartment had a Cuban flag. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Puerto the Puerto Rican flag and the Cuban flag are pretty similar. They're almost really exactly similar, the same. <laughs> They're exactly yeah, the same. Yeah, almost exact. Different colorways. Yeah, different so colorways. The mistake, the mistake is pretty honest, but it's like the only way to get the wrong flag is if you search Cuban flag instead of Puerto Rican flag in Google. Yeah, so I just. I wonder if someone was like. I wonder if oh, that. I wonder. If, I wonder if that's a. I wonder if is that that uh, maybe a Cuban member of the of the, the environment team said like I'm gonna sneak this in there. Nobody's gonna <laughs> notice this shit. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, Cuba. So, but, uh, uh, okay. I, I just want to. Uh, I I do want to make a comment about that. So let me say right now that that is an oversight by all of the reviewers, myself included, because uh, I. I was not, uh, <clears throat> you know, I didn't spend a lot of time in Miles' apartment. That that is a very, you know, way at, you know, at his home. That's not something that that lasts for a long time. So I didn't have a chance to notice it, but it definitely is something that they should have addressed because they know a lot of people are going to see that and they're going to be observing these types of things. Um, so yeah, there's no excuse for it. I know they are going to fix it. Uh, I know Danny. Over at Game Attack Radio, he is the one that put out a tweet earlier saying, talking about this stuff, and they did say they are going to address it, so maybe that will be fixed in a future patch. Whoops. <laughs> and I deduct a point for my review score. Yeah. I mean, yes. Got, yeah, well, yeah. Oh, well, I mean, I, I, one thing I would have to say is, like, I know, like, a lot of the reference, a lot of, you know, seeing the praises of, of the representation of in that game. But I feel like it's like Disneyland representation, where like every single building has a, <laughs> has a Puerto Rican flag or something weird like that. I'm like, yeah, I don't know about that. Uh, you it's, spend, a, it's a small spend, world type representation. Yeah, like so yeah, it's like it's, yeah, it's like Disneyland. Like if 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 we if if Di- Walt Disney was going to make uh, New York uh, Spanish Harlem, it would pretty much look like this. It would be like you know flags and everything, you know, <laughs> you know Puerto Rican and. You know, uh, Dominican flags and Mexican flags all over the place. Um, people dance, salsa dancing in the streets, and you know, <laughs> only one <laughs> bodega for some freaking reason. I don't know what that is. But, oh know, yeah, the, and don't forget the, the cat, the yeah, cat spi- with the spider outfit, the spider cat, <laughs> yeah, the spider bodega cat, <laughs> and that one bodega in the city. You know the one that Andrew Yang used to go to? No, for real. Oh, no, uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> well, he would have been going to a real, a real, uh, a real bodega if he was going into that Spider-Man game bodega, not the, not the oh, corner yeah. store like he was saying he was going to. Anyway, <laughs> Flaggate, <laughs> somebody says on here. <laughs> yeah, J. Ship says shout out to Danny and Paris. Yeah, definitely shout out to them. Yep, yep. Uh, when Tony was on their show not not too long ago, yep. so mm-hmm. it's a uh, good Tag stuff. Radio. So yeah, I guess right, we'll... should I go to the next question? Yeah, head on to the next one. All right, this next question is also from Eurocar. He asks, "What are the top three games you want to play before the year ends?" And these are new games, by the way. Oh, it, it can't be! It can't be a game that I recently bought. That's kind of new well they did come out this year but not like new new oh no yeah yeah this year anything from this year counts uh evil west came out this year right can't remember um i thought it was last year oh well that's an old game anyway spider-man possibly alan wake oh and uh metal uh, i can't say metal gear solid uh, collection because it's not new games 
Um, oh, that, ca- that, that, that counts. That counts. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's uh, that would be the only three P, uh, PS5 guy, PS5 games I would pretty much have. So yeah, right. That's me. Evil, uh, by the way, Evil West. Yeah, like like Brian said, that that, that was last year. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, um, I definitely still want to play uh, Sea of Stars. Thanks to Mr. Richard Bailey Jr., who's been telling me about this game for months. Uh, and I'll, I'll get yep. to it eventually because you know I'm you know I'm pretty I'm pretty interested in that game uh, and Baldur's Gate three so those are my top two those are my top two that I definitely want to uh, play uh, Sea of Stars I'll probably beat within this month and then hopefully Baldur's Gate when I get back um, and the third one is uh, might be a surprise for you uh, for some of you it might be not be a surprise uh, Super Bar uh, Mario Brothers uh, Wonder. Mm. I want to, you know, I want to, I want to play that game. I mean, oh. I'm a huge Mario fan, so I play most of those. Uh, haven't been as big of a Nintendo fan recently, but uh, Mario, I'm still, I'm still cool with the Mario's. And uh, yeah, I, people have been praising uh, the game. It's not like you know people don't praise Nintendo first party games, but uh, you know, I still, it's still pretty, uh, pretty pleasant to see that you know the rave reviews. Mm. How about you, Rich? Okay, so uh, <clears throat> Baldur's Gate 3, I definitely need to play because apparently this is on every... I, several people have told me this is a must-play game. I need to play immediately before I even talk about my Game of the Year stuff, so I have to play that. Um, Alan Wake 2, because I still am interested to see what they're doing with that game. And... Uh, this next one will shock you. Oh. Um, I think I think our I think our boy Adam has finally got into my head. I, I want to see what this Call of Duty is all about because I need to see oh. if this is it. Oh, I need to see <laughs> if this is it. Yeah, yeah. This is it. This, this is, is it. this is the one. This is this this is, that that's the one. Everyone got to play it now, right? This is what we don't, <laughs> been all we waiting for. You know, they finally got it down. This is it. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you guys if you guys catch Call of Duty, I might you know, you never know. I might dabble. I'm I'm disappointed though. It's not on Game Pass. I mean, come on, the merger's done. Get it on there. Yeah. Well, well, they mm. said you got to wait until next year for that. So. Oh, okay. So it's, <laughs> it's a delayed, delayed. The launch. next game. Mm. Yeah. So we'll probably see it at the beginning of next year, probably somewhere, and then obviously the new game will be day and date. Yes. That's the one I'm talking about. The the new one, day and date. I, I don't know if this one uh at some point it will be on Game Pass. I don't know when though. But yeah, we'll see. So you said you said uh Baldur's Gate and then Call of Duty is the second one? Uh in uh, Alan Wake 2. Ah uh, yes. Wake, that's a good one. De Monte. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder I wonder when the so that so Alan Wake 2 comes out the twenty seventh, right? Yep. That's <laughs> that's uh that's this week. Yes, so, it is. I don't know that, when that the is, reviews that, are going to. That is this week. Um, I have heard that uh you know reviews are supposed to go up slightly before that, so we'll we'll, we'll see uh what the consensus is, but uh it's definitely cutting it close. So, <laughs> yo, Rich uh, J Ship says I thought RBJ was on Foam Stars. <laughs> oh well, I, I well allow me to correct you and let you know that I I have no plans of playing that game whatsoever. But uh, <laughs> hey, if you do play it, I, I would love for you to leave your your impressions on a future show and let us know what you think about the game. <laughs> I mean, I, when I when I saw it at Pax uh, Pax West, that was the that booth was jumping. A lot of people seemed to be enjoying the Splatoon clone. So, oh yeah. Yeah. Um I mean for people that are into Splatoon, I think they will enjoy the game. But uh the thing is when I played it, because I played it at Summer Games Fest, there was only one mode that they played they had available at the time. And it's just to me, it felt like I can get tired of that very quickly. So I wasn't really into it. Now there is a demo that's out now, I think, on PlayStation that has another mode. I haven't tried that yet, but uh I don't know, man. There's too many other games to play that I actually want to play. So I, I don't know if I'm going to give that a chance in the future. 
<laughs> yeah, and you never know. Maybe next year is gonna still gonna be jam packed with games. So yeah, if people aren't if people aren't playing their uh, their backlog from this year. Uh, it's it's still it still might look like another uh, another pretty good year, twenty twenty four. That's true. Mm-hmm. So I, I I got a question before we go. I guess we'll go with Chris next. But uh, I have a question for the for the chat. What what three games are you guys looking forward to? I wonder if it's uh, overlaps with some of us because I know we have some some overlapping. Um, so curious to know. What about you, Chris? What I'm looking forward to. I mean, I'm still behind on games. Like I skipped a whole bunch and I skipped right to Spider Man. I feel like I cheated. I cheated Starfield, I cheated Armor Core Six. I haven't done played any of that. I've even played uh Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, no. So I, I, I have a lot to, to go back to. I mean I, the only thing I I wanted because I was pretty happy this year. I got Resident Evil four and that DLC was pretty good. I, I had a good year. The only thing I wanted that would have capped my year off was Elden Ring DLC. That's what uh... I really wanted. I don't know when that's coming. I haven't heard anything about it. It, it would be great if they made an announcement, but the only thing we heard from FromSoft was uh, Armored Core, right? They promoted that game. And yeah. I, I have nothing against Armored Core. I'm not an Armored Core guy. That's why I didn't jump on it, even though it looks like Bloodborne with robots. So I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to skip that. Uh, what I really... Probably will play next after Spider Man is Starfield. Go back to that. Oh, uh, but I don't know what uh, what else is coming out um, at the I end know, of the year. I know. Uh, I mean, I guess I, I could get Mario. Like that's. I would say I know. I know Kristen would probably want to play Alan Wake because she loved the other ones. Yes, that's that's on her list. I didn't. I didn't play the first one. She played the first one. So she would definitely play Alan Wake too. Um, I've yeah, I, that, that's not for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, she <laughs> loves that game. She loved that that game. She played the uh, was it the American what was it American Nightmare? She played that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh so, yeah, she would, she would love that. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is, might be coming out that I would want. But I don't. I I can't think of anything. Yeah, Mario, yeah. Mar- Mario RPG is also <laughs> coming out. J Ship mentioned Mario RPG. That's true. Ah, uh, there is that. Did... Yeah, and I think Kristen would more look forward to that than I did. I didn't play the original one either. Um, so there's a lot of nostalgia for that game. I know, and I'll probably watch her play it, but I, <laughs> I don't think I, I will play it. Um, I, I, I still. I'll wonder... play. I'll play Wonder though. I'll get. I'll get Super Mario Wonder and play that. I wonder. Sure. I've been wondering if that, um, if Mario RPG still has the secret Final Fantasy bosses in it. You know, it's now since like it's a fully, you know, Nintendo developed game now. Yeah, I don't know. Do they have to like? Is there any legal stuff that they have to negotiate? Because Square made the original one. I I suspect. They, that do they have anything to do with this one? I don't think they did. I think it's just a full on. Like they managed to get the right, the full rights to it, and they're just like, all right, we're done. We're, you know. So I don't know if all the goofy, you know, Square Enix secret or Squaresoft secrets are going to be in there. Who knows? Yeah, they may pull them out. Like, I'm, I'm going to lean towards they probably pull them out just to avoid any licensing or legal problems. But who knows? And they could they could surprise us and, and leave them in there, which I think would be nice for all the old school fans. But all the new people playing Super Mario RPG, they're not going to care that Final Fantasy Easter eggs are in there or not. Cool. What about you, Brian? Uh, I have mostly the, the same games, um, somewhat so. R- Remnant 2, because Brett just really talked about it a lot, and i seen some of the gameplay, and it just seemed very interesting. Baldur's Gate 3, because, again, everyone's like, yeah, this is like the, the RPG, and it's Larian Studios, and I think they're really good at what they do. And Armored Core, because giant robots. Who does not like giant robots? Oh yeah, Armor Core. Armor Core is good. I played it. Uh, I haven't beaten it yet, but it's 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 pretty much you know, I you get you know what you're getting. Um, it's good. It's it's pretty you know, it's difficult. I will say that. I mean, we. I mean, everyone knows what they're getting into when you know talking about from software. But man, there's there's uh the, there's 
there's aspects of the game where you need to think about your builds and how to approach uh, different enemies. But uh, yeah, it's it's good. They did a good job. Yeah, and I think uh, I think that's it for that question. Next question is from Black Metal Gamer. <laughs> um, he asks, if Game Pass keeps getting raised in price, what do you think will be too high of a price? What would be the minimum of the raised price that would make most casuals say, nah, I'm un- unsubscribing? So uh, to, uh, sort of a two-on-one, it's like, what, what's, what would be too high of a price for you for Game Pass? And what do you think is the price that uh, most people or most casuals would say, nah, I'm, I, I won't pay this? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, like um, right, right now, it's like, how, mu- how much a year? Uh, it's like about as much as a game, right? Sixty, seventy dollars, right? Uh, so it's it, Game Pass Ultimate. I know is fifteen dollars a year, or or no, maybe that's a month. That's a month. Yeah, it's a month. Yeah, it's a month. Yeah. So no, and actually, I think they raised the price from that. I think it's sixteen or seventeen bucks a month now for Ultimate, if I remember correctly. So. And then I think times the, the core is, yeah. So okay, here we go. So here, uh, here are the price skews. Xbox Game Pass for console is ten ninety nine, which is eleven bucks a month. Xbox Xbox Game Pass Core, which I guess is a PC, is ten bucks a month. PC Game Pass is nine ninety nine as well. And Game Pass Ultimate is 16.99 so 17 bucks for ultimate pc game pass is 10 bucks uh game pass core is 10 bucks and game pass uh for console is 10 is 11 bucks i mean i guess six, for me uh 16 times 12 yeah. 16 times 12 is 204 dollars isn't it yeah, so th- that's if you do the monthly. If you do the monthly, uh, mm. I don't know if they have discounts for yearly. Mm. But yeah, it's it's two hundred bucks essentially a year for for a year of Game Pass Ultimate, um, which is what uh, almost three three point something games. Yep, like three games essentially. Yeah, three games. Uh, mm. I don't know. I I you know. I think my Game Pass uh, expires in uh, this week, actually, uh, and I'm thinking about uh, getting it back. But you know, Starfield already beat that. I pretty much did almost everything that I wanted to. I put, I think, around sixty hours on that game, or close to it. Um, so I don't know if I'm gonna re up, but uh, I think right now, if 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 it's over nineteen bucks a month, uh, then I would say no. I think that's. I think that might be my threshold at the moment. Yeah, I mean, playing twenty dollars a month, and then like, there's no guarantees that you're going to be playing something every month. But who knows? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, definitely. Yeah, it's it's. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. For me, I mean, I don't. To be honest, I was. Uh, I ha- you know I I got Game Pass through uh, you know through something through, through they just got it got a gifted a a year. Um, you got it in Game the Pass. streets. Yeah, I got it in the streets. Uh oh. No, I got it in the streets. No, I got. I was gifted it from, <laughs> uh, from you know, gift, gift, gifted it. So I mean, I've been playing it, but I, I, I mean, me, you know, playing it also doesn't. It's not always a thing, you know. Like I again, like I did buy, I did <laughs> get like, um, you know, Hyper Rush, and that's probably the highlight of it. I did put the have the Lies mm-hmm. of P uh, download for it, but again, like. Also, I don't specifically own an Xbox. I have it, you know, running off of my computer. And to be honest, I, and I've said this before, I don't, I don't want to be sitting in front of this computer playing games. I, I did it for High Fred Rush, and I just felt like wrong. I was like, oh, what is this? I, I'm sitting in the same seat I work in. <laughs> yeah. ah, get me out of here. Yeah. You know, you, so I felt, felt, I icky. felt, yeah, I felt icky. I just was like, I'm like, oh, this is, gr- this is gross. So I'm just like sitting in the same old seat that i normally sit in doing i i, I, I want to be in my living room so but i mean since my game pass uh subscription is closing up soon i figured i'd buy uh you know because uh game pass gives you a, a discount if you buy uh 
by any of the games that was on there. So I just bought Hi Fry Rush so that I at least had it when uh, when everything was all said and done. That's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I think I'll go ahead, Rich. I was gonna say, uh, uh, I you know, I this is my honest opinion. Now let me start by saying, just like Manny, I I I pretty much have a, you know, I, I have a subscription already. You know, I had got a subscription a while back, um, a discounted price, of course. So what I say right now is I, I don't think it needs the price needs to raise any higher. If it was up to me, I would make the regular Game Pass $9.99, and if it's Ultimate, I would make it $15. I don't know why it's up to $16, because it doesn't feel like um, I don't know what else you're getting out of it. And I have Game Pass. I have used Game Pass Ultimate. Obviously, I play the majority of the games I play on Sirius X. I don't really go on PC often. But I do mm -hmm. think if, if you're paying for Ultimate, you should have access to PC and Xbox. Because it just, you know, that, that's just my opinion. But um, I don't think the price needs to ever go up higher. Because, again, there's enough subscriptions that people are charging you for. If you still have Netflix or any other service, you already know this. So uh, it should not go higher than 15. That's just my opinion. It might be controversial, yeah. but that's my opinion. I don't, I mean, <laughs> obviously, I know what they're trying to do. They're trying to essentially, you know, get a little bit more out of... Uh, you know, get a little bit more out of uh, out of it. You know, to, to essentially help fund the thing. But yeah, like if you mm -hmm. yeah, when you break it all down, like let's say you're let's say um, how many games did you say that would be, uh, Carlos? Like f what? Like three games. Three games. So like if you have like yeah. less than like you know, if you're getting less than three game, you're getting like three games every oh. year. Now I'm guessing like sorry, like, three three sixty dollar games. Three sixty. Oh, ha! three sixty dollar games. Not oh, three. Yeah. Not three seventy dollar games. <laughs> 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 I don't know what everybody's going up to, but I mean, I, yeah, I feel like I feel like in general that you know, like as as good for the consumer as Game Pass is, is also like it's not. In some ways, it's not so good for the industry in general because they're not making those direct sales, and we've sort of talked about this before, but. I feel like the more they start to raise the price, the more they cut they cut the line of people to get in. If it's so, if it, it, if it, if you keep it at a cheap price, I feel like a cheaper price. I feel like people will be more inclined to go into it, you know, rather than just like oh, we just realize holy shit, it cost me two hundred dollars to have this service running. Yeah. Yeah, I think I, I think uh, as far as the second part of the question. Um, what price most casuals would be unsubscribing i think uh, i think this is it i think if they raise it up a little bit more i don't know how many more people like new people you you'll get until i guess at least until the call of duty push yeah because you know we're getting not only not only you know we're talking about uh, uh video game subscriptions but Netflix, they just raise their prices again. Yeah, these mm -hmm. these companies raise prices every freaking uh, every quarter. It seems. Yeah, and it's and it's funny because they just they just closed down their DVD business, right? They're they're you know they they rental you know the essentially rental business. So they closed all of that down now. So that means that they probably got rid of every, anybody who's you know doing any sort of fulfillment. So theoretically, you're kind of saving yourself money. Why are you charging more? But I also understand why they're charging more too, because again, again, they're trying to offset the amount of money that they're blow they're blowing on making all this original content. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know, all like right. I, I, I looked, I saw like I saw a thing about the numbers of Netflix, and even to this day, as much as a bump that the Stranger Things and a couple of the other things like Castlevania and stuff give the service, it's not. It's it it is still dwarfed by things that were in the theater, like shit like Boss Baby and like you know stuff that was already <laughs> yeah stuff that had already been in the theaters. Those things are still you know still getting higher uh, higher watch numbers than their actual content is. So yeah, I I heard Carlos say that Boss Baby movie is is uh it's is fire. So, <laughs> uh, you know, I still have yet to see it, but uh, I'm pretty sure it's a uh, it's a movie. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a 
yeah, I think I think we answered that one. Let's go to the next one from Black Metal Gamer. He said, "Would mid gen refreshes always being talked about? Should that even be a thing, or should they just cut this console generation short and start with the new generation and just make whatever uh, on what make whatever on these current consoles extremely neutered, kind of like how they did with PS5 versus PS4, make PS5 games so weak compared to PS6." So. Uh, essentially, do, do you do you guys feel like uh, mid gen refreshes should just be considered next generation, uh, or yeah. should they do next generation instead of mid gen refresh? To be honest, like the the, the, the the one would think with the with all the pandemic stuff that happened, that the, you know that this would be a trun- more of a truncated generation. But to be honest, I think they're just going to try to make this generation stretch as long as possible, even though we're already seeing the cracks. You know, three years in, we're already seeing like games that are not being able to achieve all the different stuff that, that they say that you know that they that they initially said they they could set out for. So, uh, mm-hmm. I mean, to be honest, I, I like I, I would be, I would say go to the next generation, but I, I realize that they're trying to keep people around for a little while longer. I mean, if you think about it, like if you ever look at the generations of, you know, some of the consoles. They actually didn't last. Some of them, them, so at least out of some of the earlier ones, they didn't last nearly as long as you think they did. You know? Yeah. The Xbox, I think, lasted like four or five years. Yeah. And they, they were at, and that was at the end of that generation, right? They, they like, it was like, it started with um, Dreamcast. It, the middle was PlayStation all the way. And then at the tail end was, was Xbox and then GameCube or GameCube and Xbox. Yeah, and they 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 released pretty, yeah. Like I I I think five or six years was that generation. Not even seven. Yeah, it wasn't even. Well, they all released in two thousand five, two thousand six. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they. I, I for me, I think they should just do mid gen refreshes. I don't think they should do next generation consoles every, every two three years because, it just makes things more complicated. To be honest. We're just and, gonna be like, oh, here's the next generation. And the the mid gen refresh is pretty much the slims, right? You know, they're making uh, them smaller, well, right? I, I, or is that or is that the is that the um, PlayStation the pros pros? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I see them more as the pros because they're actually doing something that makes uh, that makes the specs a little bit better. Mm-hmm. I think last year, last generation. The, the Xbox One X and the the PS4 Pro were had a significant uh, improvements in their GPUs. So yeah, so I think I think they should do they should just keep doing that instead of doing next generation because it'll make things more complicated. Uh, people will be confused more than they already are, um, and it gives it gives developers I guess time to breathe and and develop for the hardware. Um, the mid gen refreshes d- doesn't really change that as much as a next generation console would be uh so you know it'll be too hectic i think if if we do next generation stuff every every two three years Mm. i mean i wonder we'll we'll see if the if the rumors are true about the playstation 5 pro or whatever they want to call it yeah there's there's a lot of rumors going on we talked about this uh during the pre-show we we're here you know Switch Pro rumors are, or Switch Two or Switch Pro rumors are going around. Uh, you know, a, a lot of the big outlets have been like, "Oh, you know, there's a Switch Pro." Even uh, I saw a podcast with uh, MKBHD, uh, Marcus Brownlee, who's a tech YouTuber, talking about this, and I'm like, "Oh, that's interesting. Why would he talk about this? He hmm. probably has some intel." Interesting. So, um, yeah, I would I would think that uh, I would think that maybe a uh, a new Switch is on is on the horizon. And uh, and the PS5 Pro, I think I think we I think wasn't some documents leaked about the PS5 Pro, if I remember, remember correctly. Yeah, though the, the 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 information came from like a you like a like a YouTuber, not really like a or a, or a influencer. Oh. It wasn't really like a, a a solid source, so it could just be like you know could be like the same bullshit, like some guy just taking a picture of their of their t of their. Of their, uh, you know, they just typed something in a in an Excel, uh, not Excel document, a, a Word document, and took a photo of it with their with their can with their with their cell phone camera, <laughs> you know. So you, so you're saying that they could be a solid snake, 
of the company. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think we'll get a PS5 Pro next year. I think that's my that's my Miss Cleo thing. Oh, prediction. we'll see. Oh man, I, does that mean uh, I need, does that mean I should wait? Does, does that mean I should wait? <laughs> oh no. Does that mean I should just let my my Spider Man oh. my Spider Man uh, collect a, maybe at least a half a year's worth of dust before <laughs> I finally play anything on it? <laughs> hey, it'll be well, just like it, everybody. It, it, it'll just well, it'll be just like you guys when when the PlayStation of of PlayStation Five and the Xbox uh, One came out. It was all a, a, you know fine <laughs> dust on those consoles once all the, the, the you know the dust settled from all the initial uh, launch titles. <laughs> That's true. You're going to say something, Rich? Uh, I was going to say, uh, my advice to Sony, if they are going to release a PlayStation 5 Pro, uh, we need to see a hell of a lot more PlayStation 5 games before that happens. You know, I'm uh -oh. not talking about I'm not talking about games that are also coming to PS4. I'm talking about PlayStation 5 specifically. Yeah. So, uh, Hopefully that's what happens, <laughs> and not just and not just insomniac games. <laughs> yes, the, the, yes, the, the, the insomniac generation. That's what this is. <laughs> yeah, insomniac is is carrying is carrying a huge huge uh, uh, weight for for the PlayStation Five. Uh, Mighty Nerd says no PlayStation Five Pro this generation, guys. And J I don't know if J Shep's agreeing with him or he's agreeing with something we said, but uh, he said exactly. I think there is um, things are pointing out that there will be. It's profitable. They don't they don't really spec up that much uh, the system that much except you know maybe some uh, d a little design difference uh, and uh, the GPU upgrade and that's it. What if it? What if? Well, it's, what well here's if it's, the question. What if it's even like ten times bigger than the last the PlayStation Five or <laughs> One? Well, the well the PS4 Pro was bigger than the PS4, so that that would have been that's a yeah. good uh, anecdote for that. Yeah. So, so here's a question though, Carlos. If you think that the PS5 Pro is coming, what game is it that Sony is going to announce that uh, they're going to say, "Well, you should get the PS5 Pro," and this is the game, one of the games we that we think you should experience on the Pro. Wolverine. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> it's Wolverine. There you go. It's the only game that you can play on the PS5 Pro. Well, yeah. I, I wouldn't be surprised. I would honestly, and this is uh, Brian's gonna roll his eyes from the, <laughs> one side of his face to the other. Uh, here, here's where the the Last of Us Part Two remake uh, comes in. <laughs> is it a thing? Uh, that, it's a thing, right? <laughs> it's gonna be a thing. You know, it's gonna be <laughs> those motherfuckers are gonna milk the shit as much as they can. They did it with the 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 Last of Us One. They did the Last of Us, and then they made the re uh, the remaster, and then they made the remake. Last of Us Two is gonna get a remake, and you know if they have a PlayStation Five Pro to show show it off, to have those features on, they're gonna do it. Um, yeah, it's it's unfortunately I think that's more of the path that they'll take. Um, either that or you know Manny Manny mentioned Wolverine. You know, in, the Insomnia train doesn't stop, so who knows? <laughs> maybe maybe that's near. Uh, near uh complete so who knows <laughs> but you know i think i think that ps5 pro is is definitely coming um yeah and it's it's jay shep mentions the legacy of jim ryan yeah jim ryan jim ryan's gonna leave us with uh with all that why you always ryan <laughs> why are you always ryan oh my god <laughs> stop the jim ryan all right, let's let's go on to the next question. All right, we got mob hits, mob hits with Discord in the bits. Yes, what do you guys think of this new trend of having to hike prices on subs due to subscription surge? Right now, I'm speaking of, of Netflix, but who's to say Microsoft or Sony catch wind and start applying these stupid tactics? Yeah, like we yeah. like we mentioned earlier, it's it's. It's something that it's a trend that everyone follows. Uh, uh, Disney said, I think they even said when they were init initially released, like, "Oh yeah, it's a pretty good price," and and we're not planning on uh, raising prices anytime soon. What did they do? They raised prices. Netflix. It seems like they ra raise their prices like three times a year for the past couple of years. Yeah, they uh, got they got to pay for all that. Price. They got to pay. They got to they got to pay for all those episodes of Stranger Things. 
<laughs> well, yeah, they got they got to pay they got to pay for the stranger kids who at this point are pretty. I'm They're pretty adults sure are, now. Are strange adults. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's there, and and Microsoft with with Game Pass, we've had it raise price this year, um, so yeah, this this is this is going to be a trend. It's not something. Yeah, uh, that's they're just gonna be like, oh, we're gonna just or stand pat and watch everyone raise their prices. They'll all raise their prices as well. Yeah, I mean, t- to be honest, like I feel like the, the 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 moment they should they should definitely raise their price, and this is still sucky to say, when they actually have uh, sought after titles on there. But I think mm. also again, like if you bring to the price to a point where people are not willing to pay for it. Where they're just like, I don't know, man. I just got this thing, and it just uh, just sort of sits there. And maybe that's also what they're looking for. They're just looking for you to just keep throwing away, like, you know, just you know, like you know, like how some people just leave their Netflix or whatever running in the background, their subscriptions, and then they just keep collecting more money and more money and more money. Hmm. Yeah, and then the funny thing is with with Sony, it's like, I want. I think none of us really care about their subscriptions because it's like no, I have. We the, don't even. I don't even know how much they cost. The, the, at least the upper tier ones. The upper tier. I mean, yeah, the upper tier ones. I never re- didn't care for, and then I, I like you know. Obviously, I still have the lower tier. I mean, and I guess the lower to the original original PlayStation uh, Zero to you know first the uh, you know PlayStation Plus was just it, you just don't get anything for it now. You now they just keep. It just seems like they just keep want to push you to. You know, extra and ultimate, or whatever the hell they call those th- stupid things. Yeah, because they did uh, they did raise the price of the of the the bottom tier. I know that for sure. Yeah, they want remember more. we talked about it during the show. <laughs> they want more money out of the bottom tier because the, because the, obviously everybody's just like, hey, you know what? I'm good. I don't I don't need the other stuff. Yeah. I have a question uh, for Jay you. Shift says, oh, uh, uh, well, oh, good. I have a small question for you guys. I'm not maybe I'm not sure if you guys I asked this, but like, what do you guys think of the 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 thing that's coming to to the, to the higher tier PlayStation Pluses where they're essentially adding in their move uh, uh, their movie service, you know, their Sony movie service to it. So where you get like a curated. Not only do you get your you know your your games per month, but you also get a, you know movies with it too. What do you what do you think guys thinking of that? I mean, we've talked about this for years with PlayStation yeah. View. We're like, it makes sense. Put PlayStation mm-hmm. View, make a make a bundle. Yep. PlayStation View, PlayStation Plus. Let everyone and PlayStation Now make every mm-hmm. like the choice for everyone to be into your ecosystem. Yep, yep. Is even PlayStation View even a thing anymore? Oh no, it's dead. Yeah, it's dead. But yet and all, Sony already. You see how like you know, see how Sony does these things. It's like they already had something that was like this already and they didn't think oh hey mm-hmm. let's put this on there now they're getting the idea oh, hey let's put them all together you know make this thing because it's all yeah you know, let's catch a little bit of that 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 playstation money in our in our in the, the film division you know playstation is their money maker like chris discusses in every every uh, report that he that he that he does during the shows playstation is a breadwinner for for sony and PlayStation has a really loyal fan base that would pay money for almost anything. So if you had the option to say, "Hey, you know what? PlayStation has a streaming service. They got they got they got movies or they got TV or any of that stuff." You know, a lot of people would get into that. And I, you know, we discussed it during the previous years. It's like it made sense to to do with a the view. They didn't do it. PlayStation View died. It might have died. It might have still died, but this would have given it a better chance. And I feel like they should do that with their their other service, even though none of us are going to subscribe to it. Yeah, uh, but but it um, makes the most sense. <laughs> yeah, it makes the most sense. All right, let's go to on to the next mop hits question. He asks, uh, "Do you guys consider Mario Wonder to be the Nintendo Switch swan song for the system?" Hmm. Um. It, that's assuming so that's that's adding the assumption that the switch 2 is coming out soon because if it is then it's definitely this one song because i don't i don't see nintendo releasing a, a major uh first party game uh after this 
Mario RPG is the, another one, but it's not uh, it's not as big as Mario Wonder or like a Tears of the Kingdom type game. Hmm. Know what the kicker is? Uh, wasn't uh, Metroid Prime Four promised like six years ago? How long ago they oh, yeah. announced that? Oh yeah. And and they... that 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 might that probably won't make it to th- this system. <laughs> yeah. They... Well, that's rich. probably going to that's probably going to be the launch game for Switch Two, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> oh sure, yeah. You know, I I love it how. Reggie back then when he he announced it, it's like, hey, you know, other studios, you shouldn't you shouldn't announce games too far ahead of time. I was like, oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> this, well, this is interesting. It's, it's the pot calling the kettle black, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, and and their and their announcement of of of, of four was just half as half assed as the development seems to have been because they it was just a dude sitting down on a chair in an office saying, hey, oh, by the way, Metroid Prime Four is coming. Well, I mean, look how long the Zelda updates were going. Like, I know, you know, COVID happened, but they just have Anuma going like, "Hey, we'll have something soon." Uh, here's twenty seconds for you to analyze. Yeah, so, twenty and seconds. Then, of... uh, not one time he. Yeah, twenty. You know, one 20... time he he came, he he came out talk about Zelda, and he didn't even talk about Tears of Kingdom. He's like, "Don't ask. I'm going to yeah. talk about this other game." Yeah, yeah. Or the or the time where they're like, "Hey, look, see, it's running on a screen. We'll play it for you off the screen." Yeah, it's on the screen behind me. <laughs> no, I, I, you know, whatever they decide to do with the the timing of the Switch Two, which I I think it would be holiday next year. I don't think they need to rush and release it in in March. But they did it with the Switch. I think they'll wait. But but you have. You have Tears of the Kingdom and you have Super Mario Wonder. I don't think I, I think like Carlos said, there's not going to be any more major releases. If if there are, there would be third party, right? It would just be third yeah. party commitments that they have to. But uh, other than that, I think they would focus their attention on the Switch too. And then what are you going to launch on there? Because you just had a Zelda, right? Now you just have a Mario. Unless you got to port the Mario and and. Do six million sales? <laughs> Switch to it. It's like, how is this happening? Like Mario yeah. Kart Eight. Why don't you port that again? <laughs> sold so well. We got more tracks. Got yeah, more right? tracks. Wave put some more Nintendo it. characters. You know the the deep cut ones. What you don't actually care about this time? Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, uh, th- there is there is. So we we got a two D Mario this year. Maybe a three D Mario. It could be. I that could yeah, be one of them. Do that. Well, yeah, I was wondering where Odyssey Two was. Yeah. That was good. Or maybe they Yeah, they, they didn't. They didn't even say anything about an Odyssey Two, though. Hmm. No. Not a thing. Mr. Jolly Yellow says Switch Two launch title. He says Metroid Prime Four. So he thinks Metroid Prime Four could be Prime Kennedy for this. No pun intended. Um. Yeah. I. It has to be. It has to be a big because. I think it, it might it might have to be a Mario game because I don't think any Zelda's not gonna come out anytime soon. Uh maybe Pokemon, but I Pokemon's not the type of game that I don't know. I just can't wait for a Switch too, to be honest. <laughs> I'm done with this goddamn Switch. I I'm gonna have to play it to play uh, Super Mario Wonder, but man, I'm seven twenty P gaming man, that's just not my thing anymore. I'm an elitist. Wait a player. second. Switch oh. two, or uh, Steam Deck version two, which one do you want more? Ooh. Oh, that's an easy one. <laughs> that's that's oh, a good question, yeah. but it's an easy one. It's, we're getting it's we're different. getting Hugo Junior. Hugo Junior. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. You know, you gotta get. Oh, by the way, let's tell let's tell uh, Adam. Adam told us a story uh, during the I Am Negan show, not during the but before the I Am Negan show. Uh, he. Uh, <laughs> It's 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 not an Adam issue, but it's funny because it you know Adam always finds a way. Um, so his Steam Deck, aka Hugo, you know he plays it all the time. He's got all his games. He's got all his you know all his other stuff that we won't talk about. Um, and he and he loves his Steam Deck, but one day his SD card corrupted, and he lost everything. Ooh. Ooh. Apparently. 
apparently, so Adam bought an SD card from SanDisk. Uh, I think it's SanDisk Extreme, and he bought a one terabyte one. And it had and and apparently what he said the issue was is there's, there's two different versions of the of that type of uh, SD card. There's an A1 version and then there's an A2 version. And he said that the A1 version is more used for storage, so it's not used that frequently, like or at, like all the time. It's not being read to and wrote and written to all the time. Uh, it's it's more of sort of just a storage thing. You know, you store your documents in there and open them occasionally and stuff like that. But the A2 version is the one <clears throat> that is more it should be more used for video games. And Adam had the A1 version. <laughs> His his video uh, his SD card got corrupted, and he not only did he have most of his games there, but he had a lot of his uh, Ami deck stuff. That's all you know. <laughs> so he wasn't too he wasn't too happy about it. But apparently, this is an issue that's well known uh, because a lot of people have had it. But uh, I find it interesting that Hugo Hugo wet the bed. Oh man, you know I'm, one thing about one thing like I would I would think you know. He would at least try to have a, a duplicate somewhere, you know, just so that if it does ever mm -hmm. happen, like it ever does go out, you just keep your duplicate and you just restore it. But hmm. yeah, some redundancy. Yeah, I do. I I have a similar uh, card as Adam did, um, but mine was actually the A2. So hopefully mine doesn't uh, have any issues hmm. because I have most of my stuff installed on that one instead of the the normal the the. the internal ssd for the system but but also you but don't yeah. you don't play nearly as much games as you as he oh does no on your uh in your thing so i mean like no it doesn't surprise, I, I, I don't think any other does it surprise does. does it surprise me it caught fire because he played it too much <laughs> <laughs> i mean yeah that's adam, adam adam is pretty hardcore with his uh with his steam deck mm -hmm. but yeah rich steam deck 2 I would definitely prefer more over uh, a Switch 2, just for the mere fact that uh, there's I just there's just so many games that I have on on the Steam Deck, and having a, having them run better uh, is great because they're those games are way more demanding than than Nintendo first party games. Yeah, and and I'm pretty sure that there, there's a way to access some of those Nintendo games on Steam Deck if you really wanted to. Uh... Uh oh. Do that research, <laughs> uh, you know. That's uh, that's from uh, that's from another throw down your sales show. <laughs> <laughs> the pirate down. That's what that would be. <laughs> that place the pirate, All right, let's uh, let's go to the next question here. This is uh, a sponsored question by uh, RBJ. Oh. Mr. <laughs> Sponsored oh really? It's sponsored by RBG. I wonder who that is. Is an is a controversial fellow. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so he uh he asks, and this is a this is a a sponsor for Mob Hits question. Yes, out of the big three, who do you think is the king of story driven games, and how would you rank them? Which I Ooh. I feel like this is pretty easy. Yeah, that would that would probably be Sony or PlayStation. Yeah, I would have Sony at the at the number one spot for that. Two, um, well, to be honest, like Nintendo doesn't really do story driven games. Yeah, like I guess Zelda is probably yeah. the, the the closest, but even Zelda's story is like <laughs> it, it's very sort of loose. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. I guess automatically it'd be Xbox, right? Yeah, that's how I I would have it: Sony, Xbox, Nintendo. Just as, just as a, in terms of story alone. You know, if you, oh. if you think oh. about it, like the way they do, do Zelda game like plots right now, it's almost like Souls games now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you, but if you, oh okay. god, if you ask Brett, he'll be like, no, the lore in El in Elden Ring or from software games is a lot deeper than whatever the hell uh, Nintendo does with Zelda. I don't know. There's a lot of mysterious lore that they don't tell you. You know, like the worlds are duplicated and all kinds of other funky. They're they're convoluted timeline of the bad of the bad future and the good future. You know, 
There's a there's a literally a whole the uh, what was it the Hyrule Ultimania which is literally a like a dictionary filled with lore of from all the different timelines of the Zelda games. Yeah, well that's that's a good point. I I think across the, it's it's the franchise's history it it's built up a pretty significant set of lore. Um, I think I think on an individual game basis, I think. Uh, from software games, uh, in particular Soulsborne games, might have more on an individual game basis. Yeah, but I think uh, I wonder if anyone doesn't agree. I think Rich, you were about to say something. I initially thought the question was going to be which studios are the best uh, story-driven studios, because that is a that would be a very uh, I would I would need to think about that a little a little bit more. Especially after Spider Man Two, because the Spider Man Two story is is oh. crazy. Um, oh. But uh, I, I think I think the order is correct. Uh, I uh, Xbox. Uh, I, I think I have to put a bit of an asterisk next to Xbox though, because I have not oh. seen <laughs> any. Uh, you know, the first party lineup is is lacking. You know, they need to. You know, obviously Gears. You know, Adam's favorite. I, I do give him credit for that. But the recent game, Starfield. Okay, yeah, there's a story in Starfield. Forza, there is no story. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking about in recent times. So uh, obviously next year could be very good for Xbox if some of those games actually drop. You know, Fable, all the other stuff, Hellblade. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think I think it's I think it's okay for them to be number two right now. But uh, that could change next year. We need to see if. Uh, <laughs> so are you saying we, we got to see more? I got to see you, more. Are you saying that Nintendo's, you know? Not so, not having so many stories, you know, story driven games as opposed to next to no story driven games <laughs> just because of the sheer <laughs> amount of game, first party games they've ever put out. Oh, well, um, that's a good question. I'm not, I'm not really sure what I'm saying. I, I know what I am, what I, what I mean to say is, uh, we need to see more from Xbox, you know, because mm -hmm. when I'm thinking, you see. When, I, when, when you mention it by the brands, I'm thinking about the first party lineup. And that's why I say, yeah, clearly, Sony is number one with that. We saw God of War, Horizon, all their games, they, you know, a lot of story driven content. With Xbox, though, uh, recently, I haven't really seen too much of that. So I, um, I think that uh, obviously, if you think about their legacy games they had in the past, they definitely belong on the list. But I'm saying that that could definitely change if they, are not going to be really focusing on their first party content and doing more of these types of games. So we'll see. But Nintendo, uh, I don't know. Cause you know, like, like our good friend, Tony, I don't, uh, I don't play on switch. Cause uh, you know, no offense, but uh, I got to play the mature games. I don't see a lot of mature <laughs> uh, games on switch. So I, I, I just, I, you know, maybe, maybe I'll change, but I, I don't, I don't, I don't play on there too much. So <laughs> Yeah, I, I I agree. I'm also that's a good point. I mean, Microsoft doesn't have as much output uh, to even consider it. But I mean, when I think of Nintendo, I think of Zelda, I think of Mario, I think of Pokemon, Pinkman, mm -hmm. uh, I think of Animal Crossing, and I, those stories are all, a lot of those are almost non-existent. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, the Mario has a shell of a story. Zelda probably has the most uh, unique or the the best one out of those types of games. Um, mm -hmm. yeah, so, uh, and most of them are just rehashed anyways. Uh, but yeah, that's, I think, I think if any, I think everyone mostly agrees. Yep. Uh, Blitz says, uh, tears, tear story was good though. Uh, it was interesting. It was interesting. <laughs> I mean, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's not, uh, it's not Shakespeare or anything, but. Um, oh, whoa. whoa. But it was, <laughs> you know. I expected less, and I got more. That's all I say. And I haven't even been uh, yet, so that's good for that's good for that. Um, it's uh, J Ship says, "Don't get me wrong. I think the Zelda stories are great, just predictable." Yep. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, it's like, what's the what's the main crux of the thing? Save Zelda, kill Ganon. Pretty much, like with the exception <laughs> of a few. A lot of them are, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> But no, it's not more complicated. Now you're a wolf now. Now you've got a 
Now you got the hand of an ancient person. You can move things around with your mind. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Defeat Ganon. I feel, I feel like the story. <laughs> I, I like I like the stories better. Uh, you know, Wind Waker, Link to the Past, uh, you know, Ocarina of Time. I feel like those are the the best stories for me. Um. <laughs> Jay Ship says Carlos throwing a Nintendo shade in Tony's place. Yep, <laughs> I guess I guess that hole needed to be filled somehow. <laughs> no problem. Right, let's uh, oh brother, I got a I got one subset here asking questions. Yo, what up, one subset? Yo, he asked. There's a game called out there called Dino Break, which uh -oh. looks like the same type of gameplay as Dino Crisis. I haven't played it yet, but with this being said, will Capcom ever give us a remake of Dino Crisis? Which is a good, it's a question that I, I feel like we get every uh, every uh, couple of months. I don't know. Uh, I mean, the game the um, gameplay doesn't. Look, wait, uh, oh, 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 okay, okay. Dino Break, yeah. The, the you mean the indie game, not the not the crazy uh, game from Capcom where all the dinosaurs are all falling out of the sky. That's Axel Primal. That's Axel Primal. I mean, you know, here's the thing. Like, I feel like a lot of the lot of indie spaces are always about like filling in those spaces, or you know, the middle age sort of side of fill in those spaces of games that have sort of just sort of let sort of left by the wayside. So would would Capcom do a, um, a Dino Crisis remake? I mean, their remakes seem to be doing pretty damn well. So maybe that you know you know maybe they do Code Veronica and maybe they'll hit a uh, hit a um, Dino Crisis. But I mean Dino I would Christ. say the only thing is that Dino Crisis sort of needs a sort of needs a bit of a glow up because this plot for that game was kind of dopey. But <laughs> you know, I mean, granted the Resident Evil plots are pretty damn dopey too. So whatever, you just switch out zombies for raptors. Mm-hmm. I would yeah. say. They, I, I would I would say that they, they might, but they're gonna just ride the Resident Evil train for a while. Like they, <clears throat> the successes they've had with remakes has been pretty much solely Resident Evil, and um, or big big time hints at a five remake. Um, and that's not a spoiler. Oh. It's just Wait, it, it, it it they're definitely throwing out hints like five, five remake is 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 either. In the works are, are coming, and then um, so you have tw I think twenty twenty six is the thirty years of Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. That would be a hell of a time to release a re uh, <laughs> a second remake of the first game. <laughs> <laughs> Resident <laughs> Evil re remake. remake. <laughs> yeah, where you you get the um you know over the shoulder camera. Over the shoulder, shoulder camera. I think people would really dig that people have been asking for that as a matter of fact the capcom made two indie projects there was a old veronica uh, fan remake they killed that one yeah and there was a um and what was the other one there's another there's there, i think there was a, a one remake but there's another one that's still happening that it's still, i saw an update for it it's still the fan a fan remake of one in unreal engine 4 that plays like um kind of like re4 does now and it looked really good they haven't tased that yet but it's funny they taste the code veronica once so people are thinking oh that's probably what's coming next i don't think that's what's coming next i think either five or uh, you know one is coming next and then of course then they can't forget People will wait for a sequel to Village. They wait for Resident Evil Nine. They have so much going on, and they have stuff going on with Monster out there. I think after all that, it once it's a little, they bled out the Resident Evil <laughs> remakes, and then there's fatigue. Then they're like, "Oh, we have Dino Crisis. Let's <laughs> do that one." All right, let's go on to the next question by Mr. One Subset. He asks, I'm sure Bioware is taking notes from Starfield. What should Bioware create in their in their own fashion that's directly from Starfield? Uh, 
Yeah, what, so uh, what should Bioware create in their own in their own game that's directly from Starfield? It, can I make a comment on this? Yes. I think Bioware should focus on surviving right now because they're oh, under okay. EA. <laughs> you know, I think I think that's their main that should be their main focus. You know, I I haven't heard anything about the next Mass Effect. So uh obviously and then Dragon Age, because I know our very good friend Gary has uh I think it is a little bit of concern because I hear people keep continuing to leave Bioware. So this is why I say uh, they need to make sure that they're able to complete whatever this next game is and that it is a success. Because if mm-hmm. not, then uh, that might be it for Bioware. That's a good point. I mean, yeah. <laughs> being 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 part of that company, once you, once you do more than one dud, you're definitely gone. <laughs> your head's about to be chopped off um but i will say from from starfield i think i think one thing that they could take is the shipbuilding i feel like the shipbuilding mechanic is uh is pretty good is really good Mm -hmm. actually um and also the planet uh the way that you know the solar system is or the solar systems are you know where there's just multiple plant multiple multiple solar systems you can traverse them and you can encounter different planets and you have to traverse through them. The traversal, I would do different. I would do something that's a little bit more uh more intuitive than what uh Starfield did. But um but yeah, those two aspects I would definitely take with that. Um I don't think anything else though. I don't think I I think maybe just uh, some of the the random missions that you that you encounter that are that are really good, you know. I think you know Bethesda. That's one of their specialties is just you know going through a random planet, encountering a random person or a random place, and uh, and it being a really memorable mission. And it's not something that you really guide it to. It's not something that uh, is insinuated by any anywhere in the story or anything. But you just stumble upon it just by traversing, and uh, you make a memory, which is you know some of the best parts of what I. What Bethesda games are for me. Anybody? Anybody have anything uh, they would want? Uh, Bioware. I'm guessing this is a Mass Effect uh, game because <laughs> I doubt. I well, doubt B- Bioware is going to make a space game that's uh, not going to be tied to Mass Effect. I mean, there is the dra- there is a Brett's favorite Dragon's Age. <laughs> I could be in there. Oh yeah, I mean, well, yeah, they could. They They're could, working they could on that right now, from, right? Stuff from that. Yeah. Yep. So, is there anything from Starfield that you feel like they could take that could correlate to Dragon's Age? I mean, the thing about <laughs> it is like, <laughs> Dragon, like, like Dragon Age seems almost quaint compared to to to, to Starfield. Like, you can't mm-hmm. nearly do as many things as as uh, you could do in the, in that game. Like, imagine if you could do all that sort of stuff. Like, in other words, what if they did somehow manage to take, you know, Dragon Age into, like, a really full-on, like, open-world RPG game as opposed to be varying, sort of, you know, sort of very, sort of, you know, somewhat linear sort of uh, stories. Mm-hmm. Or even just taking, you know, I hate to use Baldur, Baldur's Gate, but take it in, in that direction, too. Where there's a lot of feedback for the things you do. Because isn't that what... Um, you know, Bioware sort of like the ex- supposedly excels at right. You know, feedback for uh, choices that you make and things that you do. You know, I feel like maybe well, less, maybe learning less from Starfield and m- maybe more from from uh, Boulder's Gate. Well, well, the thing is, uh, Bioware did do the the first Boulder's Gate game, and True. I think they made the second one as well. They made Knights of the Old Republic, they made Dragon's Age, and they made Mass Effect. And I feel like after Mass Effect 3 and their colors, I feel like it's all gone downhill from them there. So, you know, going back to the roots, taking something, you know, may- maybe getting something from Larian as opposed to something from uh, from Bethesda uh, would help oh. in terms of, you know, what would guide them into a better place, place that they used to be good at. Yeah. Um, I just was going to say, yeah, I, know, I believe a lot of the people that was on that bio tier team, that Bioware team that originally worked on the first Mass Effect trilogy are not with the company anymore. Some of them are still there, but a lot of them have moved on. So 
when they did Andromeda, that was another team that clearly uh, did not do all of their research. Um, they were not uh, prepared because they knew that people were going to compare this new game to what was done before. So I kind of feel like they got to do their research. They, they, you know, I, I don't, I don't know if they, uh, they can definitely look at what uh, they did in Starfield, what they're doing in Baldur's Gate. But I, I feel like they should definitely go back to some of these veterans, some of the work that they've done on the original trilogy, what worked, and try to find a way to put some of that into what they're doing right now. But I, I don't really know what their goal is with any of that stuff because I know right now they are working on. Um, Dragon's Age, uh, but I have no idea what's going on with Mass Effect. I, I don't know how far they are at, with, with either one of these games, so I guess we'll have to wait and see. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's go on to the next question by Mr. Jolly Yellow Nerd. He asks, last year at the Game Awards, there were six nominees for Game of the Year, with Elden Ring ultimately winning. Only considering games that are officially released as of right now, i.e. No Alan Wake 2 because it hasn't formally released yet, what would your six nominees for Game of the Year be right now? Mm. Well, so most of us, I, I think most of us haven't played six games from this year, except maybe Rich. I mean, I can, well, do, I can uh, do the obvious ones, to be honest. Yeah, you can do the obvious ones for sure. Yeah, like yeah. the obvious ones would be like you know, uh, the Tears of the Kingdom, right? Would be you know, the Legend of Zelda. It would be yeah. It would be, okay, good. Yeah, it yeah. would be Spider Man. It would be um, uh, Baldur's Gate. It would probably be Starfield. Um, what else? What Ooh. else we got? Mario Wonder. Mario. Mario Wonder. I don't know when the cutoff point is for um, <laughs> for for Game Awards. But I always feel like it's always it's always they cut it seriously close as possible, like almost like November, like you know, like you know, when is it November, right? Mid November. Yeah, I think it's November, I think it's the, yeah. the, the the middle the middle of November. I think I think don't quote me yeah, on that. I feel like they usually cut do the cutoff like literally like like a maybe a week or two beforehand, allowing all those big games to come through because I notice that anything that doesn't hit the hit that that sweet spot like it goes a little bit over i noticed that they don't even get a nomination on the following game awards mm -hmm. well and doesn't and doesn't uh keely usually nominate a uh a token indie game a token yes. indie game um yeah there sea was, of stars sea of, <laughs> yeah put sea of stars in there put uh lies of p in there um yeah lies of p um mm -hmm. Maybe Hi-Fi Rush. I don't know. They could that could get that could get thrown into the action game category. Here's one, Hogwarts. Oh, oh. yeah, the oh, Hogwarts I forgot Legacy. About that. Yeah. So what is that? That's, and so did I. Uh, yeah, we'll just keep, yeah, get rid of. I guess <laughs> Hi-Fi Rush and then, yeah, Hogwarts Legacy instead. Yeah. No, there you go. So okay, so let's let's dwindle this down to six then. So we know Baldur Baldur's Gate is a lock. Tears of the Kingdom is a lock. Yeah. Uh. Spider Man is a lock. Yeah, that's a lock. Mario oh, Wonder got... is a lock. Oh, Mario. Okay, let's. Okay, that's four locks. So we got two. Two more. So we got to choose in between uh, Sea of Stars, Hogwarts, Starfield. And... Wait, hold on. Does Does Chris want to defend Resident Evil Four because that well, did come out this year? <laughs> oh, I, I year. They'll just have eight. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it. That was really freaking good. I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I. But uh, it would be up against stiff competition. Like I think, Gears might take it. To be honest with you, um, that's just I. That's on. I I haven't played it myself, but I watched Kristen play it, and you know, just seeing how rabid Nintendo fans are, I would think that there would be blood if it didn't win yeah so i think so, so rich i don't think resident evil 4 would be nominated for game of the year just because it's a remake and there's stiff competition like chris mentioned so okay. it's got an uphill it might you know you never know but uh i i feel like it, it, its odds are 
a little bit against it. So, uh, well, I, I do have one comment to make. I'm, I'm gonna wait until after you finish this. Uh, the six games, though. Cool. So, we'll, so we're at number four now. We're at number five. So we got. So the first four. The first four are locks. We got Spider Man. We got Tears of the Kingdom. We got Baldur's Gate, and we got Mario Wonder. So those are the the four locks, for the throwdown locks, and we got two left to complete the six. Okay. So we got in between Resident Evil 4, Hogwarts Legacy, Starfield, uh, uh, Sea of Stars. So Wait, in between, no. Did you mention Armored Core in there? Whoa, we got Armored Core. We got Final Fantasy 16. <laughs> <laughs> we got a lot of games. We got a lot of games. You know, here's I the thing. Think... I I would say you could maybe offload some of those off into the other categories. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You could maybe offload. You could. And... You could possibly offload Tears of the Kingdom into the action game category. Right. If there's an yeah. action game, there's an action game category. You could possibly do That's that. Yes. Right. But, but, but it has to be. It has to be nominated for Game of the Year. It's yes, just, it will be nominated. Um, I, and honestly, Rich, I think I think you're I think you're thinking this. I think you think the same way I do. I think Starfield will get nominated. Yeah, it will get nominated. Uh, we have to give a shout out to Brett because I know he would vote for that if he was here. So yeah, Starfield mm-hmm. definitely oh, on that list. Oh, oh Rich, yeah. you haven't yeah. you haven't listened to the last last you know, few episodes of <laughs> Throwdown. <laughs> Brett, Brett has soured a little bit on Starfield. Yep, he's, in, he's gone Uh-oh. the other direction. <laughs> Brett, but that's two games this year for him. It was Diablo Four and then it was Starfield. Uh, I forgot about Diablo Baldur. Four. Yeah, Baldur's Gate yeah, is his. Sorry. Baldur's Gate is his, his his new hotness. Yeah, Baldur's. I think Baldur's Gate and Remnant Two. I wonder if, uh, how much Remnant love two. Remnant Two will get. Yeah, yeah, that, that's Remnant, gonna get yeah. a lot of love. Yeah, that will get some love. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jay Ship asked, "How do they pick nominees?" Uh, Jeff Keeley and his band of uh, of, of judges uh, nominate them. He publishes so, it in his. So in his he. Site. Uh, so he what Jeff Keeley does is he creates these idea balls, um, you know, which have the games inside of them, and then what he does is he throws it inside of a giant pool with a bunch of manatees. And whatever the manatees pick, <laughs> that's the nominator. That's the one that gets nominated. <laughs> Go ahead, Rich. So um, I know we're still trying to think about the picks, but let, let, let me just say this. I have saw, I've seen when people saw the Metacritic score for Mario Wonder, a lot of people are having conversations online, talk about, oh, man, the this is going to be a lot of work for Jeff Keighley to figure out the Game of the Year nominees. But to go to the comment that Emilio made earlier, you know, there are other categories for best Nintendo game, best Xbox game, best PlayStation game. Mm. So I'm pretty sure Starfield will probably win that award. And I'm, and I'm pretty sure that uh, one of those uh, between Mario and Zelda is going to win that award. But the question is about Game of the Year. I'm pretty sure he'll just make a whole, uh, he'll expand that list this year and not narrow it down to just six. But we'll have to wait and see if that's what he does because it's, it's well, too many games. Well, we know for sure if it, it, it's possible that the Nintendo category might dilute uh, their their way of wanting to put two Nintendo games for Game of the Year. So, yeah. um, but Tears of the Kingdom has to be there because people will write. If it's not, up yeah, there. <laughs> and, 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 and I believe that that was a game that was on the most anticipated when they did the, the the previous show. That was one of the most anticipated games. I didn't know if it won that award, but it was it oh, was yeah. nominated for that too. So I think it, I think it was there like for multiple years. I think I know one <laughs> game got multiple it won multiple years most anticipated for making yeah. fun of it. But yeah, it, interesting. It, yeah, I I'm curious. The the last two, I I feel like. It's there's no law. I mean, who who knows what Alan Wake does? But you know, but yeah, maybe maybe uh, maybe, I think Starfield is going to be there because they need to have a Microsoft representation. They want Phil Spencer. Yeah, they 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 do want it to be there, but it will not win that award. It's definitely not going to be Game of the Year. I mean, we we know that for for a fact. But uh, we'll see what happens. (laughs) They want they want Todd Howard and his hair. 
I mean, I mean, if I'm honest, I I think I think the game of the year is either going to be Zelda or Mario because it just. I mean, I could be wrong, but I kind of feel like uh, with Jeff Keighley, uh like you said, there will be riots if the game is not nominated. But I I think one of those games is going to win because as much as Spider Man Two was good. I thought God of War Ragnarok was great last year, and that didn't win Game of the Year. So, uh, you know, yeah. I, I don't, I don't think they're going. I don't think the Spider Man Two is going to win it either. So, but we'll see. Yeah, uh, and also Jolly Yellow uh, asks what, uh, which one we would get Game of the Year to. We won't answer that because <laughs> we're going to have a show at the end of the year, which is the end of year special. Where we discuss our Game of the Year. So. Make sure to stay tuned that at the end of the year uh, in December, and uh, and we'll go over our game of our Throwdowns uh, game of the year. Hopefully, Manny will, will uh, have played Spider Man by then. <laughs> Elisa, play, <laughs> Elisa played maybe two of the of the year of the things to be able to have at least some sort of vote. Well, no, that would mean I'd pay three games this year, right? So it'd have been High Fire Rush, possibly Alan Wake, and uh, and Spider Man. Oh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Mm. all right let's and uh we, we have one more question uh and what i'll say is we won't answer it i'll ask it though <laughs> and then and, and uh, you'll you, you guys will know why oh before that uh barry burns says jeff Kelly nominates any <laughs> dale kojima game and leaves a room then he yeah. puts on a fake mustache and re-enters the room and nominates another Kojima. <laughs> <laughs> How much do you want to bet that Death Stranding Two is going to get nominated for Big Game of the Year? Oh yeah. Or oh, they'll, yeah. Do, they'll, they'll, yeah. Give, they'll do they'll do they'll give Kojima another lifetime achievement award so they don't need to give him, you know, they he, <laughs> <laughs> so that he doesn't win like Game of the Year. Mo, mo, uh, mo, it will be most anticipated. It'll probably be in on that list. Yeah, it'll be most anticipated oh, yeah. game of the year. <laughs> oh, yeah. He just makes up awards for Kojima to have. So. <laughs> just so he can give him those those cool statues. So, I'll, like I mentioned, Kish, this is by Keisha, by the way. I'll ask the question, but we won't answer it. Uh, he asks, have you guys ever seen or interacted with the Gamergate people? Do you guys see these people as ridiculous and sad as I do? <laughs> And I would say they're just as bad as flat earthers. Well, you know, we won't answer that because you know we it takes us down a rabbit hole that I feel like a lot of us don't want to get to. Uh, but um, but yeah, there it is. <laughs> there it is. That's the question. We read the question out. Uh, but yeah, Manny, that's the last question. Yep, uh, that that's it today. I mean, well, you know, yeah. So uh, thanks a lot, guys. For, uh, for whoa, 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 what's up? What's up? What's up? I I was gonna say I did have a question, a really quick question. Oh, oh yeah, sure, ask. yeah. Uh, sure. And I don't really know if, uh, well, I, I know Manny, you may not be able to answer this question, but I, I do want to call this out because this is something that will probably have to be discussed in the future. Uh, our very good friend, Mr. Torrance Davis, made a post the other day. Uh, maybe you guys know what I'm talking about in reference to Spider Man, where he gave his hot take and said Spider Man Two looks like a PS4 game. So I wanted to ask you oh. guys, do you agree with that? Do you feel as though this game has enough about it that makes it feel like it's a PS5 title? Or do you think that Torrance has a point that this is just a really good looking PS4 title? Well, to be, well, first to be, off, to be well, honest, like like the thing about it is like even on PS4, that Spider-Man game looked the original Spider-Man game looked really good. So it's yeah. sort of yeah. like a weird so it's like a weird bar. <laughs> You know, because it's already a really good-looking game on on the previous console. So, I mean, how much more could it go, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yo, yo, Rich, where where did Torrance uh, post this? Because he's not on Twitter anymore, is he? Oh no, this was on Facebook, and then somebody they were sharing uh... it in the in the chats and stuff like that. I laughed when I saw it, because uh, because because hip hop hip hop and him went back and forth. Oh, oh over that. I, I bet they did. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! Yeah, I, to answer fire. the question, you, this is honest. <laughs> the, to answer the question, I feel like uh, it looks really good. It does look. I feel like it does look like a PS5 game. I, although I will say this: we 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 won't. We still haven't reached the peak 
So there mm-hmm. will be games in two to three years from now that are PS5 games that are going to look a lot better than Spider-Man 2. Yeah. But, but I feel like as far as we've gotten from PS5, this is the best we've gotten. I mean, Cyberpunk, but mostly just on PC. Mm-hmm. There's, there's no, there hasn't been that many games that have looked better than this. I mean, the, the only you know the only thing that's like you know it's only about a lot of this generation has been about the you know reflective surfaces, but like really like could you see a ratchet? I mean, with with the except with excluding the the um the the fast eight uh you know hard drive speed, could you you could definitely see a game that looks fairly close to what Ratchet and Clank looks like on the. Uh, you know, on the last thing, you know, on the um, you know last yeah. the most recent game, like yeah, what is the the sort of defining look of of titles? Uh, I feel like we're, we're sort of getting into that that section that Tony always talks about. Remember what, during the the uh, sort of PS3 era, and he's like, how could games get look, look any better than this? You know, or four era, yeah. you mm-hmm. know. So I, I don't I don't know to be honest. Yeah, like there is no def- like there's just no doesn't seem to be any sort of like just games in general just look good with the exception of that king kong game but <laughs> you know <laughs> somebody is it see somebody is still able to make a piece of trash on these consoles oh, yeah. that make really amazing looking graphics so shout out to Gollum yeah. as well yeah <laughs> to Gollum. yeah like uh, two pieces of trash somehow managed to get out on a playstation 5 and xbox series s X. <clears throat> I don't know. To be honest, from looking at it, it just looks like I'm like, you know, I, I'm not like looking at the new Spider-Man game. I feel like the same sort of feeling from the um, from Miles Morales, the Miles Morales, which mm-hmm. again, amazing looking game. No matter what you played it on PS4 or PlayStation Five. And I feel like with this one too, it seems like it feels like more of the same. It doesn't feel like that much of a leap over it, but I wouldn't say it looks mm-hmm. exactly like a PlayStation Four game. It, if anything, it just looks like a really, really good PlayStation Four game, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah. not just like re- not just regular PlayStation PS Four games. <laughs> but you know, yeah, I agree. It's like a high bar already, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Controversial <laughs> statement. Um, keep in note that I've I've only seen the Digital Foundry comparisons because I don't plan on buying this game anytime mm-hmm. soon. And yeah, they again, <laughs> the two games look very similar side by side. But again, it's what you expect. You know, you you like <laughs> you like you don't go into it expecting like okay, it's again. It was a PS4, PS5 title, again, the remaster, and then the sequel is now PS5 only, so you don't really expect it to be wildly different, you know? You expect it to be like, okay, it's more the same, but some things refine, some things push slightly better, you know, maybe ray tracing gets a bump, or maybe some textures here get a bump or something. But, mm-hmm. again, I'm, I'm kind of in agreement with, with Torrance. Like, I'm not seeing the PS5-ness of it, and it's just kind of like, okay, like, where's the PS5? Again, going back to what we talked about during the start of the, of the gen, it's like, okay, like, let's, like, where's the next gen in in this game? I know when people like to point out, okay, the SSD, you get, like, fly around really fast. It's like, okay, again, I've, I've, I've had an, an SSD in my PC for years now. Like, fast, fast loading times are not impressive to me. Um, that's just what I've been used to. It's, it's like when you guys talked about Monster Hunter and it loading on the PS5 being really fast. It's like it took like thirty seconds. That's slow. Like I'm used to like Division Two loading in ten seconds. You know, so like I'm used to that level of speed. So I'm not seeing it. Granted, that's my perspective. So that's fine. But even then, it's like they were showing off like the ray tracing and. Saying okay, ray tracing is good, but then it's it's only available on certain things and certain modes, and even then the resolution is still just a bit odd. You know, if you zoom in very very far in, you can see like the blockiness of it all. It's like okay, fine, no one no one zooms in that far. But then again, I 
I I honestly don't see the PS5 in this in this game. Maybe I will when I get it on my PS5, but again, it could be just the videos on YouTube don't don't do justice. So I don't really have much to talk about here. I, I will say this: the the thing the thing that I noticed right away uh, between the old uh, Spider Mans and this one is just the 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 detail of everything: the buildings, the cars, everything feels like it's just so much more refined. Uh, there's a lot more people on the streets than the other one. Uh, the other one, there's you know a couple a couple of folks, and this one it feels like really lively. It feels like New York. Um, the ray tracing is also a vast improvement. I don't even did, did PS4 have ray tracing on Spider Man? I don't remember. No, it doesn't. It um, has a, it no. only had screen space. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, so the ray tracing is another one. Uh, you know, Brian mentioned the SSD stuff. Uh, but just as far as the visuals and the performance, I feel like uh, I feel like it's 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 a it's a jump. I'm not saying it's the biggest jump because there's there's a lot of similar similarities. And obviously, when you're going from PS uh, from Spider Man to Miles Morales to this one in a, in a in a span of what uh, five years, um, you can only go so far. So you know, if 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 they decided, you know, if if they did. Spider-Man 2018, and then Spider-Man 2 came was the only thing that to come out in 2023 or 2024. Then maybe I would have expected a a significantly different looking game. But you know when you're when you're releasing three games in a span of five years, granted one of them is a DLC game. Uh, mm -hmm. I I don't expect uh, you know Insomniac to to drastically change the the game to look a certain way. That's feels like it's something completely different just uh just an improvement and again you know we still we still need to see what game playstation has that's gonna because god of war ragnarok was in was in the game you know that's gonna showcase the ps5 uh ratchet and clank did it a little bit but you know like uh, we all can agree it kind of looked like a ps4 game uh, just slightly better, but uh, we'll see. Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll see. And uh, yeah, that's it, guys. This is uh, was a great thought on your question. I want to thank Richard Bailey Jr. for joining us for this wonderful throwdowning of your questions. Make sure to like and subscribe, and don't forget to hit all of our wonderful links below. And uh, I was your host for today. And I was joined by Carlos Romero. Yo, yo, make sure to catch on to I Am Negan on the Coalition. I Am Negan, <laughs> Walking Dead, Fear the Walking Dead. We didn't like the episode, uh, but no, make sure to check not. us out. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Later, Majoma. Bye, guys. Chris Seeley. Oh, hey, take care, everyone. And, of course, Mr. Richard Bailey Jr. again. <laughs> Who, who we'll see on Thursday again. Yes. So he'll yes. be joining us for the next, for the following episode, for all those crazy things that are going to be happening this week. We don't know what's going on. But anyway, we'll see you later, guys. Peace. Later.